A diamond jubilee welcome to Exeter. Thousands turn out to greet the Queen and celebrate her 60-year reign. She's just a credit to this country. She's dedicated her whole life to this country, and so is the Duke. And I think everyone should turn out and see her, especially 60 Diamond Jubilee. It doesn't happen every day. It's amazing. She's lovely. Good evening from Exeter University, which played host to the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh today at the end of a two-day Diamond Jubilee tour of the region. Thousands of people from across the generations turned out to welcome the royal couple today. And with students from 130 different countries studying here, there was a real international feel to the day. And in the sunshine, there was also quite a party atmosphere as well. They had 10,000 union flags to hand out, and I think every single one was put to use. The Queen also enjoyed lunch here today, and later in the programme, we'll go behind the scenes to see how the royal menu was prepared. We'll also report from Somerset, where the Queen started her day. But first, David George reports on her visit here to open the new Forum building behind me and a quick stopover at Princess Hay in the city centre. Crowds gathered in the main streets of Exeter throughout the morning for a glimpse of the Queen. In the event, she arrived half an hour late, but nobody seemed to mind. The entertainment had a World War II theme. The Queen was retracing her steps from 63 years ago when she came to see the rebuilding of Exeter after the wartime bombing of the city. Princess Hay is named after the then Princess Elizabeth. Amongst the crowds, a group of especially invited guests who were all here for that 1949 visit. Absolutely fabulous. Um, such an honour to, to be presented to the Queen and it's just amazing. It really is. I still can't believe that it's actually happened. What did she say to you? Uh, so you were here and I said yes ma'am. And I explained how I climbed onto the roof of the shed in order to get a glimpse of her, of her Majesty at that time. You didn't need to climb onto any shed today, did Not you? Not today, no. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Those that know say the Queen is wearing an Angela Kelly-designed deep lilac double crepe coat and matching hat. Oh, beautiful. She looks lovely. Really lovely. And a lovely day. The sun's come out, has not it? Especially 60 Diamond Jubilee. It doesn't happen every day. It's amazing. She's lovely. The Queen and Prince Philip then went on to Exeter University to open the new £50 million Forum Centre. Inside, there was a remarkably enthusiastic reception. And the university's chancellor, former children's TV presenter, now Baroness Floella Benjamin, reminded the Queen and Prince Philip they were both there for the very foundation of the university in 1956. Lunch at the university was with 270 guests from across Devon and Cornwall, described as unsung heroes, nominated by friends, colleagues, and in this case, a teacher. Other children's dads were in Afghanistan as well, and they were sad. I helped them too and um, made them happy. She just said it, that was very kind of me for doing that. <sighs> now here's a man who's seen it all before. Today actually has been uh, brilliant because of the crowd here, the energy, all these young people. Many of overseas students come to see our Queen, you know, which is, which in itself, it's brilliant. And for one posy presenting daughter and top table serving mother, it's been a doubly good day. She's quite pretty and um, she said thank you very much, my dear, to me. <laughs> you know, you see her on the telly and you think, Wow, and then when she's actually there in front of you, and I just couldn't help thinking how, what lovely skin she has. <laughs> <laughs> After staying half an hour longer than expected, the Royal Party left Exeter at the end of the southwest part of this Diamond Jubilee tour. David George, BBC Spotlight. Yes, it's been quite a special day here at Exeter University and with me now to reflect on the day is the Registrar for the University, David Allen. We saw in David George's report there that the official opening of the Forum building behind us took place today. What exactly will the building be used for? Well, basically, Justin, the Forum is a £50 million investment in our students. 
It brings together our libraries, our teaching facilities, social facilities, catering facilities, and a student advice centre, which is a one-stop shop that students can use, whether it be for careers advice, for support for their studies, for financial advice, whatever it might happen to be, the forum provides it in a beautifully designed surrounding, and also surrounded by three landscape piazzas. As I mentioned earlier on, with so many international students here, there was a real international flavour to the day of, of celebration. How would you sum up the atmosphere here on the campus today? Oh, it was completely vibrant. I mean, it was a wonderful celebration, not only for the university, but for Devon and Cornwall as well. To have the Queen and the Duke here during her Diamond Jubilee, and to have students from 130 countries all celebrating her 60 years on the throne and seeing her open the forum building was absolutely magical for the university and I hope for the local community. Yes, indeed, and many people from across the southwest came here. You were sort of almost a, a hub for the southwest celebration here today, weren't you? We were. We had about 10,000 people on the campus. We had busloads of people come from Cornwall, from North Devon, and obviously from the Exeter area, and also coming up from Plymouth as well. So it was just a fabulous day of celebration for everyone. The Met Office ordered up the sunshine. <laughs> Everybody was waving their Union Jacks, and I just think it was a really great day. Yes, the weather couldn't have been better. David, thank you very much indeed. Congratulations on such a good day. Well, as I mentioned, the Queen started her day in Somerset, amongst other places. She visited Crew Kern and Yeovil and enjoyed a Jubilee Country Fair and a celebration of local food. With more details, here's our Somerset reporter, Clinton Rogers. They rehearsed a traditional royal welcome in true Somerset style, the national anthem, as you've probably never heard it before. On rain-sodden ground, they laid out the grey carpet. And for the Queen's first visit to Somerset for a decade, getting a good view was going to be important. As yesterday, the train took the strain as the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh arrived by royal carriage to Yeovil's Penmill station. First stop, a Diamond Jubilee Fair. And the first task there, to meet two new police horses, one of them aptly named Jubilee. We were slightly worried when we saw the band play. Um, I have to admit that uh, no, they were both really well behaved, so we were really pleased with them. They went well, didn't it? Yes, he was very well behaved, very, very pleased with him, yes. Oh, he's talking to it. Oh, I can see Oliver. There was a magical, unexpected moment for a group of local children who had no idea when they arrived here they'd be presented to the Queen. We were waiting for a long time with our flowers and somebody just came over and said, would he like to go over and present the flowers to her? We just plucked out of the ground. Yes. 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 <laughs> the fair was showcasing the best of Somerset business, from traditional crafts to high-tech industries. And the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh stopped at one stall with family connections. Well, we're very proud to report to, to Her Majesty that um, Prince William, when he's flying his helicopter, is wearing Pittard's leather, which is crafted here in Yeovil. And of course, Prince Harry, when he's playing polo, is proudly wearing Pittard's leather on his hands also, which is why he wins all the time, of course. And then it was back on the road, bound for Crookham. En route, hundreds line the streets to see the royal couple drive through the villages of West Coker and East Chinook. In the crowds, one former military wife who missed an opportunity to see the then Princess Elizabeth when she was in Kenya six decades ago. And she and her Prince Philip were at treetops, which is uh, uh, where they watch game. And they were planning to come to our mess for lunch but unfortunately, she had to fly home to be queen instead, which was a great disappointment. In Crookern, the warmest of welcomes. And after touring an exhibition of historic artefacts in the town hall, just time to give Ada Eglon an extra reason to remember her 100th birthday today. Somerset's verdict on the Jubilee visit? Job well done, Your Majesty. Clinton Rogers, BBC Spotlight, Somerset. Well, that's all from Exeter University for now. But if you want to know what the Queen had for lunch today, stay with us. Later in the programme, we'll be meeting the chefs who prepared her meal. First, though, the rest of the day's news from NASA.
Thank you very much indeed, Natalie. One of the highlights here at Exeter University today was a special lunch for 250 guests from right across the southwest. People from all walks of life were invited, people who've worked tirelessly for their local communities. They dined in the Great Hall. I was lucky enough to go in there first thing this morning and have a look. The tables were beautifully decorated, as you might expect, and all named after local rivers in the southwest. The Queen dined at the River X table. I also got a chance, an exclusive preview of the royal menu as it was being prepared. And Richard is with me now, along with the other two chefs who were in charge of lunch today. So how did dessert go in the end, Richard? It went tremendously well. I had a fantastic team of chefs from across the university here today, and it, it went very, very well. Very pleased. I was struck by how calm everyone was this morning in the kitchens. How did it go in the run-up to lunch? Uh, well, we were very, very organised beforehand and very calm about the day. Uh, obviously, a few nerves. Um, but as it got towards the actual lunch service and the, there was a few delays and whatever, it got a, you know, it got a little bit more nerve-wracking. But, yeah, we, we, we were on the ball. And, Aaron, you were in charge of main course. Just remind us what that was. We had a, a bit of rack of lamb with sweet potato fondant, uh, baby um, spring green parcel, raw bean and pea broth. And there was a real emphasis on local produce. That's right, it's, everything's local. Which Rob will talk to you in a minute about. And, and what about the, the royal couple afterwards? You got presented to them. What did they say? Uh, the Majesty of the Queen said that, um, that it was an absolutely splendid meal, and the Royal Duke of Edinburgh said that he couldn't believe there's three head chefs there. Um, but I explained to him we were obviously from different areas, but we all pulled together for this one. So, yeah, teamwork. And Rob, as Richard mentioned earlier on, there was a slight delay. The Queen got here slightly later than scheduled. What sort of impact did that have on your tight schedule in the kitchens today? Uh, it's like when everybody's cooking at home, you've got a certain time when the lamb's got to go in, whatever, and we had a time when the lamb had to go in, and that time was going up and down like a fiddler's elbow. I mean, we, we got the time right in the end, and the meal went out beautifully. And, and briefly, as a chef, what has it meant to you today to, to work on such a prestigious meal? It's the pinnacle of my career. I mean, to actually cook for the Queen is wonderful. Um, it's something I'll always remember. Sense of relief now, I would imagine, though. It's a very much a sense of relief. It's <laughs> a bit of a letdown as well, because we've, we've been building up to this for such a long time, and now it's done, it's... Oh, <laughs> back, to, back to day jobs tomorrow, so it's a bit, yes. Well, congratulations on such a successful day. Thank you, all three of you, for joining us. Well, it's the end of a historic day during which thousands of people right across the southwest turned out to welcome the Queen on her Diamond Jubilee tour of our region. It's been a day of cheering, a day of celebration and a day of sunshine. We'll leave you now with some of the highlights of this very special day in the southwest. From all of us here, good night. A diamond jubilee welcome to Exeter. Thousands turn out to greet the Queen and celebrate her 60-year reign. She's just a credit to this country. She's dedicated her whole life to this country, and so is the Duke. And I think everyone should turn out to see her, especially 60 diamond jubilee. It doesn't happen every day. It's amazing. She's lovely. Years ago, when she came to see the rebuilding of Exeter after the wartime bombing of the city, Princess Hay is named after the then Princess Elizabeth. Amongst the crowds, a group of especially invited guests who were all here for that 1949 visit. Absolutely fabulous. Um, such an honour to, to be presented to the Queen, and it's just amazing. As well, they had 10,000 Union flags to hand out, and I think every single one was put to use. The Queen also enjoyed lunch here today, and later in the programme we'll go behind the scenes to see how the royal menu was prepared. We'll also report from Somerset, where the Queen started her day.
But first, David George reports on her visit here to open the new Forum building behind me and a quick stop over at Princess Hay in the city. Good evening from Exeter University, which played host to the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh today at the end of a two-day Diamond Jubilee tour of the region. Thousands of people from across the generations turned out to welcome the royal couple today. And with students from 130 different countries studying here, there was a real international feel to the day. And in the sunshine, there was also quite a party atmosphere at the centre. Crowds gathered in the main streets of Exeter throughout the morning for a glimpse of the Queen. In the event, she arrived half an hour late, but nobody seemed to mind. The entertainment had a World War II theme. The Queen was retracing her steps from 63 